Good evening, Commonwealth, and thanks for watching the Channel 2 News. I'm Ashley McDowell. Let's take a look at tonight's top stories. A fire engulfs a house in Dandan. Dan. We have the details. Also tonight, the House of Representatives pass a bill that will lessen the waiting time for a deed. And CHCC sends out a warning about a highly contagious disease that is making its way around the Pacific. In sports, ghosts and goblins infiltrate the Kville pitch. Stay with us, these stories and more are next. Forty eight hours. That's all we get in a week. But those forty eight hours we try to make them last forever. How? By filling in fast with all the right stuff. With a lot of laughter, a little drama, some adventure, and a whole lot of love. Dad, Mom's here. It happens pretty quick. Bye, Dad. But it's cool. Because the rest of the week, we talk about our plans. You want to go to the beach? On how to make the next 48 hours last us a lifetime. At one of Saipan's beaches, this mother lays about 100 eggs under the cover of darkness. She hides her nest as best she can and then slowly makes her way back to the ocean. The eggs hatch and the babies head for the sea where they will face a daily dose of danger. Just one in a thousand will make it to adulthood. Those that do will one day lay their own eggs. Sea turtles are protected under CNMI law. If you see one that is stranded or if you see illegal activity, call the hotline at 287-8537. Hoffa Day, Tirwami, and good evening, Commonwealth. Today is Thursday, October 31st, 2019. A residence is engulfed in flames this morning in Dandan Dan as a structure fire ignited. According to the Department of Fire and Emergency Medical Services, at 9.20 a.m., Rescue, Medics, Engine 2 and 4 Street from Kagman, Garapan, and Susupi were dispatched to the scene. No one was injured and no treatments were given at the residence. The fire was under control at 10.12 a.m., Officials from DFIMS says the fire was located at the rear of the house, a single-story, full-concrete structure. The cause of the fire is still under investigation. Suspects have been arrested and names have been released in the murder of YAP's acting Attorney General Rachel Bergeron, according to the public service broadcaster Radio New Zealand. RNZ states the two men allegedly conspired for a month to kill the acting Attorney General. The charges allege Anthony T. Teeth fired three times with a shotgun at Bergeron, which killed her. The broadcaster also states that the co-defendant is Francis Buchan, who was allegedly driving the vehicle and is facing five charges. The acting attorney general was killed while walking to her home in Yap on October 14th. RNZ states both suspects are being held and are to appear in court again on December 18th. The House of Representatives passed a bill today which lessens the time to be granted a deed for those homestead applicants. It was a lengthy session this afternoon while lawmakers discussed a Senate bill which mandates the Department of Public Lands to issue the deed of conveyance within 45 calendar days instead of two years if applicants have submitted and passed all requirements. The absence of DPL Secretary Marianne Terragazzo left some representatives with many questions pertaining to the bill. An amendment was introduced by Representative Sheila Babauta, but was defeated. 
The bill passage was voted yes by 13 and 5 no. The bill now goes back to the Senate for further discussion. The Commonwealth Healthcare Corporation is warning against a highly contagious disease that is emerging in the Pacific and U.S. mainland. It's the measles, an infectious disease caused by the measles virus. Usually what happens is that uh, one gets exposed th through uh, an affected person coughing in the uh, air and then it lingers in the air for about two hours and anyone who is not vaccinated appropriately for measles can then be infected if they enter the same air. The first signs of the measles infection is usually a cough, runny nose, high fever and red eyes and starts at the hairline with red spots leading down the body. And although CHCC believes the risk of a measles outbreak in the CNMI is low, there are other areas that have ongoing outbreaks. I want to emphasize that we do not have any current measles cases on island, um, but our uh, awareness has been really heightened by the fact that all around the Pacific there have been reported outbreaks. So the closest is actually the Philippines. They've been dealing with outbreaks in the past um, year and a half or so. And then most recently in the northern Pacific, Samoa uh, has declared an outbreak. So I believe that there are up to about 20 cases, confirmed laboratory confirmed cases of measles with uh, three deaths, um, two in young children younger than age five and one one, one adult. So that was just reported out to us. But there is a way to protect you and your family. Vaccination. According to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, approximately 90% of unvaccinated people who are exposed to measles will get the virus. Vaccination is the only way to make sure that you're immune and it's it's great. So one dose of uh, MMR, which is measles, mumps and rubella, uh, because we no longer in the world really give just single vaccine of measles. We combined it with the mumps and the um, rubella and that gives immunity up to 93%. And then the second dose of MMR gives immunity up to 97%. So it's not 100%, but it's pretty good. But there is some concern with the age rate in the CMI of people that are covered with the two doses of the vaccine. The vaccination coverage rate, meaning um, in the age group in CMI, how many people are actually covered with two doses of MMR, which is the sort of recommended maximum. So once you get two and it's documented, you're done. You don't need more than, than, than two and usually um, is uh, for age four to 18 years old, 91%. So in the U.S. states, it's usually 95%. So we're pretty good. We're not up to 95, but we're at 91%. The main concern is in our adult MMR vaccination coverage of two doses, we're only at 49.8%, so a little less than 50%. So for adults, um, you all need to come in and get your, your MMR shot. And if you don't know if you've gotten the MMR shot, uh, try to get the records. And then if you can't get the records, don't worry about it. It's totally safe to get more than two doses in your lifetime. So what we just do is we recommend a repeat of the two dose regimen. CHCC is providing the measles vaccine completely for free. How it uh, happens is that you come into the immunization clinic uh, Monday through Friday and then you get for free the first dose of MMR and then you wait at least 28 days and then you get the second dose. Uh, if you get the second dose a little bit earlier than 28 days, it's not as effective. So that's why we recommend waiting at least 28 days. The only way to prevent an outbreak is the vaccine. So let's keep measles out of the CNMI. Reporting for KSPN, I'm Ashley McDowell. Families have already begun their preparations for All Saints Day, like cleaning up and setting up some shade together. KSPN team heads over to the Chalankanoa Cemetery to take a look. So this is tradition and every year we make sure that the graves are clean and, and neat. It's our customary to come down here and clean up after your loved ones, make, make it nice again, because it only happens once a year. And everybody has a family. As a Roman Catholic, we believe on this that you remember above the one that passed earlier than us. We always have to think of this 
every day. Sometimes you have birthday, but this is a very important day for everybody. This is a big birthday, November 1st and 2nd. We must come and enjoy with our uh, our parents, your children, grandchildren, because once a year. And we don't do this just for tomorrow and day after. We, we try to do it uh, like year-round, come over and check the graves, say some prayers, ask them for their blessings and thank them for all they did to us when they were still here with us. Coming up, we go around town to check out all the catchy costumes. All that and more after the break. Mom, are you sure? What about the shutters? And do you have your medicine? Don't worry about us, love, okay? You take good care of yourself. I'm in love. Yeah, sorry. The power went out, so I have to light up all the candles. Yeah. Yes, baby, yeah. yeah. I'm just glad our home phone's working and we're able to contact you. Watch the Visitor's Channel online, on time, anytime, at SaipanTV.com. Where to go, what to see, what to do, restaurants, spas, activities, and culture, it's all in one place, in high definition, on your mobile device. SaipanTV.com. Check it out. Welcome back to the Channel 2 News. Zombies, superheroes, princesses, and so much more fantastic costumes this morning at William S. Regis Elementary School. This is definitely a time of year where students can become whoever they want to be and have all the candy they can get. Knock, knock, trick or treat. Are you? What do you love about Halloween? Getting candy. What are you for Halloween? A vampire. Yeah, what do you like about Halloween? Uh, the candy. It's a ghost. What do you guys say? Trick or treat! At William S. Rages Elementary School, they decided to twist it up a little. Oh, basically our concept is promoting healthy and nutritious foods to the children. And this is one way for us to encourage them to increase consumption of healthy nutrition that we provide in school cafeteria. Today is an exemption actually because it's Halloween, but as much as possible we don't want to give too much candy so we want to give out school supplies like crayons and pencils for treats to the kids. The kids still got exactly what they wanted and students, teachers and staff even showed off their costumes. Zombie. A zombie? Who made your costume? My mom. I mumble woman. Knock, knock, trick or treat. Who are you? I'm a witch. I'm a little witch. Knock, knock, trick or treat. Who are you? I'm a witch. I'm a little witch. What are you going to do with all your candy? Share. My classmates. And now we head over to the Jotin Kizu Public Library, where the trunk or treat took place earlier today. Let's go check out some costumes. 
This is Sights and Sounds with KSP and photojournalist Delbert Camacho. It's Halloween here in the CNMI, and I'm here at the Joe Tankizu Public Library. Now let's go check out what kind of treats these tricksters got at their sleeves. Uh, Batman. What do you like about Halloween? Uh, the Batman one. Police officer right here. Future cop. Hi, happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Hi. You can come. Hi, happy Halloween. <laughs> happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween, CNMA. We are you two strong. The reason why we choose this costume because in Saipan, our culture when we have party, we always balut them. You know, if we don't balut them, then we're not in a party. So happy Halloween, CNMA. Happy Halloween, everybody! Happy Halloween! Happy Halloween! Happy Halloween! Happy Halloween! Happy Halloween! Happy Halloween! about Halloween? Um, you can get candy. <laughs> What's your favorite part of the Halloween? Candy corn. Candy corn? Happy Halloween. Halloween gives us a one day of the year where we can all dress up as something that we're not, but also forget about all the other stuff going on to one around us, you know? I, I think so. Yeah. I guess you're right. Now that I think about it, yeah, mm -hmm. you can be somebody else. You could dress up like what someone that we're not. Great I novel idea. Yeah. Let's try that sometime. Takes us away from reality a little bit. Yeah, maybe tomorrow I'll try that out. <laughs> a new look, you know? A new try look. Try something different. Yeah, I think yeah, you should. that's a great idea. I'll do that Maybe tomorrow. grow yourself a mustache. Well, that's going to take some time. <laughs> uh <-oh. laughs> All right, uh, we got a sports report coming up. Uh, if this mustache stays up, we'll have a walkabout of a very significant place, Ashley. <laughs> a place that's very dear to your heart. Oh, I can't oh, wait. Hour. easier to use. With live TV, recordings, video on demand, and streaming apps, all in a single place. When you're looking for something new, recommendations are tailored to you. Voice-powered, personalized results to find what you want faster. And the unlimited potential of smart home. The new experience from TiVo is here. Bubblegum Shrimp Company opens daily at 11 a.m. Located on Beach Road in the heart of Garapan. You deserve more. I know it's been hard. Come on, let's go for a ride. Hi, welcome to Dal Rancho. Hi, Thank you. You're welcome. 
Now this feels like home. Dial Wrench Elm. Make your lives better since 1987. When sports fans. Sports fans, happy Halloween. It seems to get bigger every year. Everyone seems to be getting into it except me. Well, the Northern Mariana Islands Football Federation is into it this afternoon. Staff are putting the finishing touches on their own haunted house. Famous referee Amsad is welcoming everyone to the Coberville Training Center tonight. And don't be scared. A message for the public. Yeah, hi all uh, CNMI kids. You guys come to NMI soccer field in Cobbler. I get a lot of fun and have fear candy and you guys have a lot of different things, okay? And everybody, happy Halloween. Come CNMI, all the kids and the parents too. All right, it wasn't that long ago that on a message for the night, the OLEI Sports Complex would be bursting with games. Some nights there would be baseball and basketball and softball and soccer, all going on simultaneously. But those days are gone. Now let's look at what used to be the center of the local sports scene. <laughs> I didn't get my sound by word on female repairs for the OLEI Sports Complex. In the meantime, Northern Mariana Sports Association staff have been doing their best to keep this facility clean and usable, but it's not only typhoons that they have to deal with. We're over here at Civic Center and the sports complex, the OLEI Sports Complex as it's known, and there's broken glass down here. You've got to be careful. We'll pick it up and you can see that it's from the broken window. Now this window was not broken in Sotolor, was not broken during U2, was not broken during Hagibus, but it was broken just recently, a few days ago, by students after school in an act of senseless violence. No word yet if the 2020 Little League season will be played over here and the, the Civic Center Sports Complex. The grass is beautiful, if it's not level. <laughs> it's, the lawnmower is uh, not level, so you can see the grass is growing and really growing better in some places than other. It's definitely playable. The field itself is, well, you need to cut out the grass to make a, a smooth dirt surface, but that's not that difficult. So the field, definitely in playing condition. But if we look at the dugout, it's not bad either. The dugout, definitely suitable. You can see that the fence has been repaired over here. The grandstands and the roof over here, not bad. Not bad at all. So, is this field ready for 2020? Just about. As you can see, the lights over here at Palacios Field have uh, been rendered inoperable from the typhoon damage. Those are some of the repairs that are expected to be completed when the FEMA funding is approved. The field itself, pretty good shape. It's got a grass infield. It's not that bad. Uh, makes for a faster ground ball, so a little bit trickier, slippery. And the grandstand, well, there's no grandstand really. It's not covered. But the netting is up, the fences are up, so you can play ball here. You just can't have any night games. However, the track and field and the soccer field, they look fit. We're here at the OLEI Sports Complex, and as you can see, it's a, a beautiful day for running, and this field, or this track, I should say, is in tip-top shape. It was resurfaced recently. It's shown no signs of damage uh, since then, so this is ready to go, ready to run, as they can say. And next door over here at the soccer field, boy, it's never really looked better, has it? That's because it hasn't been used very much. It's actually been underutilized. Only the uh, students are using it for after-school soccer games and of course it's very popular on Monday for Frisbee. But the, this part of the sports complex really ready to go. Not much repairs are needed. There used to be night games, night soccer games here at the OEI Sports Complex but as you can see the lights have been badly damaged uh, during the typhoons and well, the, the, the Little League baseball field that used to be a softball field, and used to have night softball here, that's 
forget about that now. Those lights are, have been completely destroyed. Even over here at the baseball field next door, those lights are also destroyed. In fact, if you want to see them, you don't have to necessarily look up on the pole because some of them are down here on the ground still. This damage from four years ago, Sotolor, and still waiting to be cleaned up and then U2 hit and so now they're waiting for the Sotolor and the U2 repairs to be funded by FEMA and get this uh, all cleared up before the games actually begin. One of the biggest decisions facing the Masa is what to do with this aging added gym that's now dilapidated and clearly showing its age. Close your eyes and imagine the added gym not there. You know, until 1981, it wasn't there. It was constructed in 1981, 38 years ago. And now the discussion is keep it or get rid of it and start all over again. That's one of the decisions that will have to be made by Namasa and FEMA in the uh, very coming weeks. Here's the wind-up and the pitch. I don't believe what I just saw! Let's roll at Gold's Gym Saipan with group exercise for every body. Total Resistant Exercise, or TRX, helps develop your core and improve strength. And Zumba toning is probably the funnest way to get fit. The Shake Cafe is a great place to stop by for meal replacement or supplements. Today is the first day of the rest of your life. Mostly cloudy, isolated showers. This wind 10 to 15 miles an hour. High 88, low 78. Seas 5 to 7 feet. Sun, oh, sunrise. Oh. Must be Halloween, Ashley. Strange things are happening in the studio. <laughs> all right, it's going to be beautiful tomorrow. That's all you need to know. Well, Bob, you know what it is? is it, there's a, a few spooky things that have yeah, been going on during I our show, I feel like. an invasion of uh, aliens or something. Or the ghosts. The ghosts, ghosts. are haunted, haunting us. It's Halloween. I feel haunted. I thought we got rid of them, but show. I guess not. Yeah. i tell you. So uh, hopefully those ghosts go away, and we're going to get out of here, too, and enjoy hopefully the rest of Halloween. Hopefully my mustache stays up until the end of the show. That's what I'm hoping. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, we're about to wrap it up, so I think you might get that wish. Oh, you better hurry. It's going. It's <laughs> Here it goes. Happy Halloween. Bye. Have Good a night. great night. Have to go. <laughs>